All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with the guests on my podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technological discovery that you need to understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by a random Twitter friend, Alex, aka Bitcoin to save us. So go, fo go follow him. He's a qualified um, accountant and we're going to jam about his Bitcoin journey share his thoughts and uh, we're going to go through some of his tweets this is an impromptu episode so uh, yeah super fun to connect with you man yeah thanks a lot bram i mean obviously unexpected i've never seen done this so slightly <laughs> nervous as we talk but um i'm sure we're gonna have a good talk yeah man of course yeah well like i just said off mic we are just two random dudes jamming on bitcoin uh this is actually what i really like about bitcoin in general you know like there's so many different people from so many different backgrounds that just ended up with the same conclusion, you know, and um, for me, just having these uh, conversations is already just, um, I want to say like inspirational for me, but also gives me confirmation of that what I'm thinking, you know, that my rational thoughts um, yeah, are correct to a degree, you know, and I think that strengthens uh, kind of like trust in myself. So I'm super excited to hear about your journey and i think uh that would also be like a fun place to start like how what, what like what's your background how did you get into bitcoin and um yeah let's just start with that yeah 100 percent. so i i um i'm a qualified accountant um i've i've been in the profession for 12 years um and i came in into bitcoin actually by by accident i'd say the first time i actually heard about it was in 20 around 2013, and it, it was highly linked to um, rams, ransom payments, right? So we had this um, reputation of being linked to, to crime, and, and obviously that reputation was put forward um, a lot with all the FUD that we see all the time. Um, and obviously in 2013, there wasn't enough information around for me to actually... Um, you know, watch YouTube videos like like your your podcast or or or, or Sailor being there with his conviction, etc. And I never actually got into it and never read about it. Um, and then I just totally forgot about it, never looked into it, and just came back into it around 2021, uh, when basically crypto was made available quite easily uh, within one of my bank's apps. Um, and so I, I, I bought a few crypto, uh, which now I totally am against, obviously. But I think a lot of people start buying a lot of different coins and think, oh, if this one hits big, then yeah. you know, that, you know, if if this one becomes the next Bitcoin and all that kind of thing. But then obviously, once you start looking and watching videos and and understanding the difference between all these coins. That's when you learn that Bitcoin is the only actual decentralized network, and therefore that's really what you want because then nobody controls it, manipulates it, etc. So, so yeah. that's basically my story. So, since that time, any savings that I have, I've been putting it into um, Bitcoin when possible. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I saw a tweet. I think it was uh, Stephen, what's his name, Lutka or Lapka from Swan. He said, like, you have to shitcoin before you get into Bitcoin. Like, you need to, like, a lot of people obviously <laughs> co come into crypto for thinking, you know, with thinking I can gain some stuff. Like, it's it's the gambling attitude, right? I mean, like, uh, yeah, I've been in crypto, Bitcoin for 10 years. I did all the ICO stuff, NFT stuff, you know, but now 100% uh, Bitcoin. Like, you need to do that because you have to figure out and see that, that what crypto is is not what bitcoin is right and i think it's interesting you say like now you see it as a savings vehicle right where when you came in you probably saw it as like a you know a quick money making scheme or exactly. something like that right exactly i actually the the name of my so you've got my twitter handle there and and, and that's the same but the name of my page before was bitcoin is is um long term savings technology basically because after having seen so many videos and 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 realizing that at, you know at least at every 4 years 
um, the appreciation was so big that you could trust it and, and understand that the economics uh, guaranteed that that was going to be the case. So if you've got any fiat that you can put away for four years at least, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, um, then you know that's going to appreciate for that sum. And why would you put it anywhere else when you know it's safe there and, and no one can take it away from you? Yeah. Well, saving is also different than investing, right? Or gambling. I think that, that well, gambling I knew, but like investing versus saving, like that distinction for me was quite an eye opener, actually, right? Because like for investing, you need to do work, right? Like you need to research what do I actually want to invest in? Like, how is this company doing? Is the CEO still alive? Are they, you know, charged with, you know, some court case somewhere? Like what, whatever, right? Um, you know, Ray Dalio had satellites over oil uh, uh, refineries, right? To see if they actually produce the oil, <laughs> like all this stuff, like you have to figure stuff out. And I think saving is more like the passive um, kind of lazy approach, I'd say, that a lot of people want to follow. But also like uh, if, if, you are, if you're a risk averse person or you simply don't have time to figure it out, why would you be forced? You know, like currently people are forced to figure it out and invest, you know, and um, at least, you know, make their uh, money um, work until they uh, earn back what has been stolen with inflation. Um, but yeah, like uh, the, the, the savings aspect I find interesting. So is that how you approach it now? Like you just make fiat, anything that's extra, you save in Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. So anything that you could... Um, consider not a short-term operational expense, let's say your your rent, your supermarket, etc. And, you know, we're all different, but if we consider, let's say, that three months um, expenses and then the remaining amounts um, you can put away, then I think that would work for a lot of people. Um, and, I mean, w what you mentioned is, is something that I, I've always related to, you know, I've been an accountant for 12 years now and, um, you know, you, you work your, your ass off in any profession to qualify, uh, you, you know, you go to university and then you work really hard at work, uh, you do extra hours, etc. Uh, and then any savings that you have are being basically melted away by inflation by at least 10% a year. You know, I don't really believe that inflation is 5 or 6% as they say, it must be at least 10 or 12% a year. Um, and then you need to know sort of what to do with your money so that it doesn't lose that value. But the problem yeah. is it's not that easy because you need to study the companies. You need to understand, oh, what's going to happen next? What, you know, what sort of net legislation might change? Um, and then you've got options like the S&P 500 where, you know, if you, obviously if you, if you watch Sailor's brilliant presentation recently at the uh, – um, Bitcoin for corporate, Corporations Conference, he says that 493 of yeah, the S&P 500 flat. companies. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Put it into gold? Gold only sort of holds the same, tries to hold the same value, but it's been for 10 years um, sort of relatively flat, you know, um, and it's not that accessible as well for normal people. You know, that it, it's more for the kind of elites and investors and that kind of... So, I think it's not that's just what, it's not yeah. just set and forget, right? That that's not it. Exactly, you, and and investments are that, isn't it? You know, you put it there, and then okay, when do I, as you said, when do I exit? Because you know, when do I go to the next investment? And you need to get the next investment right. Uh, so so Bitcoin is simply always right. So you, you just gotta, it's just a time thing. So yeah, the economics ensure that it will appreciate more than any other investment and more obviously than inflation so yeah. it, it's 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 the best sort of um savings vehicle really hey there i want to ask you for a quick favor i noticed something interesting 75 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed yet subscribing helps me grow this channel ensuring more great content each week so if you're enjoying our conversations on bitcoin for millennials please consider hitting the subscribe button on youtube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting app I'm super grateful for everyone who already joined and shared their thoughts. Your feedback really keeps me going. 
And I want to ask you to continue doing that. I try to respond to all the comments and also the emails that I get uh, and DMs on Twitter, etc. So don't stop doing that. I'll keep going. Now let's get back to the conversation. Yeah. What I love about this and in general, I think, you know, having these conversations, like each conversation, I learn something or something clicks for me. Like literally what you just said about, um, you know, it's also uh, Peter Dunworth said something similar. Uh, that's our second episode of the, this podcast. Check, check that out. But he said something like, literally what you just described is his day job, right? So let's say you're a carpenter, you come home, you have another job, but, but you don't know you have that other job, right? And your other job is doing what you just said, like figuring out what should I invest in, which companies, blah, blah, like all these things. But there are people whose job it is to only do that, right? So how can you beat them? right exactly you you cannot beat them but you are forced to play in this kind of like zero sum game very like high time preference every day you try or every month whatever you're trying to figure it out right and it's like all these little steps you have to take constantly to chase something that you i think most people do not understand right um and i mean i was there so i'm not saying that with any um you know disdain yeah. or whatever whatever sure. Like, like I was there too. But like Bitcoin is a very big like upfront investment, time, challenging your personal beliefs, all these things. And you really have to dig deep. But then once you get it, it's literally set and forget. Right? You don't have to uh, think, think about it anymore. So like that, that is something for me that is so interesting because I think in that sense, like it opens up your mind. You know, you did the work and then like it's the hard choice, easy life versus, you know, uh, easy choices, hard life. You know, like people, you know, gamble nowadays or they do stonks or crypto stuff like it's that short term, you know, high time preference. 100 percent. And it, it's, it, you know, as you're alluding there as well, it's not easy to understand Bitcoin. That's something that we definitely need to definitely need to acknowledge and use in terms of um, trying to help people um, to get there. So I, I personally also felt that, you know, Bitcoin and crypto could be a scam, you know, maybe um, up to four years ago, you know, uh, because I just didn't understand it. It's just, it's just so sort of volatile you you just feel that it could be a lottery you just don't understand what's going on because of the the price is so huge you know the, the unit bias oh it's so it's 20,000 it's 40,000 it's 50 you know when is it going it's it's gone up so much so it's not something that you're used to so eventually you know as you said by looking at so much education that's available online now and and you know you know sailor has done a brilliant job at least for me i mean he 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 has this unbelievable way to explain things and then have detailed sort of links to each example and then compare to the other, um, I'll, I'll call them other investments, although Bitcoin is not an investment, but other places where you could put your money and the flaws basically um, with the current system. Um, and that's another thing, you know, as people, we don't really totally understand how money is generated and um, that simply being able to print money uh, causes your money that you have in your savings to lose value. And that is the first step, I think, for you to understand that your money needs to be somewhere. And when you do, you're going to go and look for those answers and then realize, gosh, it's the only real option that I have without doing any work. Yeah. Yeah, and also... Um, and I think we talked about this a lot in the podcast, but it's it, what you say, it's, um, it's difficult, but it also, it is foreign in a sense, like you just never thought about it. Like most people never thought about it. Like what is money? How does it work? Where does it come from? You know, how does it work for me? Right. What is saving? What is investing? What is yeah. wealth? What is ownership? <laughs> what is property? Yeah. Like all these, it's, it's so much, um, you know, and that is, that is, I think. It's daunting because it's so much, but it's also daunting because it's foreign, like it's all new, right? And I think the older you are, um, and, and I, I shared this uh, already a bunch of times here, but like uh, I, 
I was 30 and I worked at a bank and I had a mortgage and someone told me the money in the bank is not yours. And I was like, what is going on? You know? And I mean, like that, that already was pretty difficult. And, you know, I was working at the bank, but like the older you get, the harder this gets, I think. Right. And, um, so that's also why I really like making the podcast, like just hearing these stories, like where did you come from? Right. Like how did it click for you? So, you know, you, you just mentioned you found it like, 2013 14 you learned about it etc you know that was kind of like professionally right but were there any like beliefs that you had that made you like not get it when you first encountered it or like not dive dive into it like what what were your thoughts there why did you think it was a scam or Ponzi yeah or whatever um no, one hundred percent. The first time I heard about it, I was at, I remember the, the the actual scene right now. Um, I was at work, and and my supervisor, and we were super friends. Um, he was talking to the IT manager who used to sit behind us, and and they were just talking about this this thing that sounded different called Bitcoin, and um, and I think one of them was just saying that it was used for you know, ransomware when hackers would um, basically hack into a company and then ask for a payment so that they would basically give control back or something like that. And, you know, at the time, you know, this was, this was obviously a long time ago and, yeah. you know, I had I had very little experience and, you know, I wasn't focused on learning in, um, investments or learning different things to save money at the time. I, don't even, I didn't even have money saved. Um, so I just sort of saw it as dangerous, criminal. Um, it, you know, it, it just didn't think about it. It's just something that I'm not never going to get involved to, into. So that, that's what actually happened. And then yeah. from there, and that's the thing. Um, I think every single time that I saw it in the media, it was sort of um, placed into that box. So if you depend on mainstream media, you kind of... Um, and if you're not, you know, into so for instance, I think Twitter also happened um, happened to uh, to open my mind a lot to Bitcoin and and to see that the community is so massive. And then you realize that you know these people are quite intelligent. You know, they they are questioning things and and then they can sort of post um, explanations on you know why this is the right thing. And there's so many people actually doing it and very intelligent people. So you know. I think that's what opened my mind to it. Yeah, I love that. But I think like that, that is what I mean with doing the personal work, right? Like I still have mind blowing conversations with people who are just so against it, but they don't know why and they cannot articulate it. And oh yeah, uh, you know, it's a Ponzi, blah, blah. And I'm just baffled by it every time, right? Because I think... And But it's more about when I then reflected on myself, I think like, what was it that I decided to do the work? Like I could not retrace my journey, right? But when you just said like, yeah, but there's so many people on Twitter and they share and I read it and that inspired me. Like at one point you opened your mind, right? You opened a certain door that was closed before, right? Like if you, you know, I don't know if you describe it like that, but let's say you lived in Normieland before and now you are like, you know, exactly. or like totally orange filled. Like that's, that's a paradigm shift, right? So what, what do you think happened there for you? Well, and, and there's, there's something very important as well. Like I, I wasn't on Twitter before and I wasn't using it. And, um, you know, I'm not in, in gift hub or anything like that. So, I was strictly studying for my profession and were doing my work. And then eventually, um, by some sort of, I, I don't even know why, I decided to go into Twitter. And then you find a whole different world there, uh, which I wasn't actually used to because all the other sort of vehicles that I was using, you know, YouTube and all that kind of thing. So mostly when you go to, um, to YouTube and you type Bitcoin, a, a lot of these, like, Kind of scammy, well, not not scammy, but just like Bitcoin is going to the moon, Bitcoin is going to a million. It's just kind of silly videos that come through. The the actual you know good videos like like yours, like you know like sales talking and and you know like sort of scientific and and using good explanations, they're coming at the bottom where you got to sort of look for them. Um, so I think what really happened was that you know. 
my mind opened when I realized that, oh, okay, there's a lot of people that are very, very intelligent that are involved in this, okay? And the mainstream media doesn't actually show it. And, and why did I start believing in it? It's just because it made a lot of sense when you thought about in detail. You know, when you looked at all the, you know, obviously the, 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 the price appreciation, yeah, great. But it's more about, you know, the economics, decentralization, um, not being able to change rules. And, you know, if you've got 2 million coins, you're not, you're not more powerful than having 10 coins in the network. Yes. So that kind of thing is what really sort of, gosh, this has to be it. And if it's not, I'm willing to, you know, take that bet and be wrong because in nothing else, I'm going to be right. So that, that's sort of how I felt. And, and it was this rush of adrenaline and always worried about the price initially. And, you know, I was checking and, oh shit, I'm worried. And then suddenly I realized, no, this is going to be forever kind of that kind of volatility. And I just got to, sort of accept it you know yeah dude fucking love that fucking love that uh, but this shit like for me the tldr would be you humbled yourself exactly all right and that i think is a common <laughs> is a common is a common team uh especially if i put it against what i just said like if you have these conversations with people that are like you know vigorously against it but they don't know even uh, even know why you know, like that is the point. The point is, you know, and I think it's Sailor who said that, like, there are no informed critiques. Like, literally, in ten years, I've never seen informed critiques. And it's like once you once you see this, like, you have to humble yourself because you can be like, oh no, this is so confrontational. Oh really? The, the you know uh, the the entire money system is designed to work against me and <laughs> designed to work for the government. But I thought I trusted the government because I chose the people in charge. Blah blah, like all these things. Like it's just such an ultimate humbling um humbling experience and uh yeah i think i i think that's a very common theme uh between people so very interesting to hear you uh you had the same all right so what eventually made you like see it when you did understand it so you know you opened your mind you started consuming this information like what what was the aha moment that's a Good question. Um, do you know what? I think, as Taylor says um, about his situation in MicroStrategy, he uses that word desperation in terms of um, seeing his cash melt, basically. And my, you know, sort of dream in the past, like many other people, was to. Um, to save for a house deposit, right? So, I, you know, saving for a whatever 20% or 25% deposit. And obviously that took a few years and doing that with my wife um, and I was just thinking, where could I put my money so that it wouldn't lose value against inflation because house prices were going up faster than my salary, even though I, I was being promoted, getting better jobs, etc. Um, and eventually coming across Bitcoin as we, as we discussed here and, and, and realizing, um, of its potentials, um, I was just thinking, right? So you, in order to get into the property market, you need that 20% of capital or whatever the deposit is going to be. Um, and then you're stuck into an asset that will not appreciate as fast as Bitcoin, obviously. So why would I put, you know, fifty thousand dollars or pounds or a hundred thousand dollars or pounds into the housing market when I can put it into Bitcoin and pay a lot less for rent? So that's when it actually opened my eyes. And I do think that, you know, if if it is important for many people to sort of feel that they will have a much better life in the future rather than just have a house that you have to pay um, every single month for the mortgage and it's not even yours and the bank can take that away from you and you're always worried that you have to pay the mortgage and it's that pressure on you. Um, you know, if you feel that you don't want that, 
why would you put yourself into that? So that's exactly where I was. And, and I think Bitcoin just gave me that solution. So if people say you can, but you can live in a house, what, what's your reply? <laughs> yeah, they just say, but you can't live in Bitcoin. Exactly. Yeah. You can't live in Bitcoin, but you can live in a rented house and have a much faster appreciating asset that in the future might give you a much better house while still preserving your appreciating asset. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Because I think it's also the old way of thinking, right? Like for, I'm going to guess we are in the same age age range, right? You, you, are, you are a millennial. Um, like our, our parents they were able to actually get a house that would appreciate, right? That if they would sell it from being a couple uh, because they got a child or two or three, right? To then buy a bigger house and have cash, right? That's how, how they did it. Well, that's totally un unattainable uh, for us. But, but that thought still lives in our mind because that's what we saw our parents do. Exactly. And and it's sold as you know, it's sold as as the dream. You know, but I think a lot of people dream of that, isn't it? To have a their own house, to have their their family, obviously. So the house, so that they can have the family, and and it's part of stability. And you know, you work so hard um, studying, and 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 then within your job, in your career, uh, you know, going up the ladder, let's say, and it, it's almost like the accepted natural step. Um, mm. but like Sailor says, you know, it, it's now the digital, um, Manhattan property or, or whatever he sort of calls it as a, as a symbolic way Yeah, because it really is. I mean, if it's, um, if it's limited in terms of, of supply and it doesn't change in, in accordance with demand, um, and obviously its value is then people see it, then it's it's the best sort of store of value that you can have. Yeah. And eventually, I think it kind of um, worries me slightly that, you know, the, the American legislators removed the ability to um, to to use the ETFs um, as collateral in the US. Because in some ways, I, I don't know what you think about that and you, and you can say, but um, maybe it reduces a little bit of the interest in terms of buying the ETFs themselves, which is, I'm not a fan, I'm, I'm self-custody, um, but it, it's one of the ideas, isn't it? You, you you purchase Bitcoin and then you can use it as a as a collateral so that you can then purchase that house without selling your appreciating yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, these services will be built because the incentive is there. Um, so that's mainly what I think. Like I understand that you know you can use the ETF as a vehicle to do that right now. Now, um, but then yeah, you're still so much woven into this traditional system um, that it would not be something that that I would do. But I believe these these uh, services will 100% um, be created, and it also makes way more sense. Like uh, if you have Bitcoin as collateral. Uh, and, and someone doesn't pay the mortgage, you can liquidate it instantly. So you know, like it's just you don't have to auction the house or do whatever. Like you don't, you don't have to do all these things. Um, so yeah, th this will 100% um, be built. I'm I'm thinking about what what you just said about um, you know it's a logical next step, etc. Like yesterday, I talked to you know, but uh, no. So what I want to say is like this is how they get you in the system. You think this is the next step. You don't really understand why, but you're still doing it, right? So are you actually thinking, right? Are you thinking for yourself? Do you actually know what you want? You know, like even at 30 or 32, the answer is probably no, but that's the entire point, right? The fact that you are participating in a system that you don't even understand, that you're playing a game that you that you are forced to play, that you're a subject in, but you don't even know what, what is going on. And it's funny because you mentioned like going, let's say from, you know, studying or living together in a rental apartment, whatever, with your girlfriend, and then you move into a house that you buy, right? Like as the next logical step. Yesterday I talked to Ella Huff and she's 21. And we talked about, she had a great analogy. Like as a kid, you have a piggy bank, right? And that's your thing and you can hold it and the coins are in there, right? 
But then at one point, I don't know, you're 12, 13, you get a bank account, you give all that money that you held physically, you, you give that to the bank. Right? You just do it. And you feel cool. Like I got a bank card, right? And you're just you're just doing it, but you don't really know why. And your parents probably also don't even know why. You know, and that's 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 kind of how it goes. But we're not really thinking. Nobody's really thinking. One hundred percent. I think. I think. You know, it, it kind of. It, you know, the way we see it also, as as I grew up and grew older. Um, you know, obviously there are conspiracy theories out there, and and uh, that the elites might not be that um, <laughs> transparent in in terms of how many things are done. And as as we go grow older, I I certainly feel that that may be the case and it sort of feels that by design education doesn't teach you about how money really works it, it, it's almost like you know as you said um the culture um sells what was what is expected and especially you know the american dream is is sold um and and most people believe in it um and it feels that having your property is the best option within that feeling of not understanding mm-hmm. everything else. Yeah. So it feels like, oh, at least I'll have a place to live. Um, because, you know, you've got shares for, you know, thousands of companies. I'm going to study that. You know, I'm going to understand, you know, the, what they're going to develop, what technology they're going to develop, or new tech companies that are building this, that, and that, or that AI app or that AI um, sort of robot or whatever it is that, how am I going to understand what the next big thing is? So the house feels like the safe um, solution in that confusion. Yeah. And, but and it's, a fallac- it's, a it's a fallacy. It's a fallacy. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's a fallacy, right? Like yesterday I saw a video of a guy who was 71 who bought a house, I think it was in California, like 1985 or something for $30,000 or whatever it was, right? And he said, um, I live in that house. Like it, it, it was a big house or his family lived there. Like, you know, this is where I want to die, basically, is what he said. So it's all paid off, all these things. And he has like... um how do you say, like, uh, you know, the checks for when you're older? I don't know. Was it like a like pension stuff? But it wasn't pensions, that high. Yeah. 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 Well, pensions, but also like from the state or whatever. Like, But he was talking about this. But he said the property tax is going up every year. And so this guy is working at 71 four days a week to pay for his property tax. Only, only to pay for his property tax because he doesn't want to pay it from, like, his bank account because that's what he saved for... Um, his pension, right? And he's like, it's. Uh, he said the word fallacy. That's how I came with fallacy. But he's like, it's like I don't own it. I still rent it. I paid for it with interest, but I still rent it somehow because if I don't pay the property tax, they'll come for me, mm-hmm. and and they will and they will take it. They take what I believe is mine, right? And on paper, you know, on the title deed, it says your name, but it's not real. Like it's mm-hmm. you. You do not really own it. If you have and there's only one it, thing yeah. you can actually own, right, as an asset, and that is Bitcoin, which for me, that is, that is one of, for, for me, the things that really clicked for me. Like, that's mind-blowing. There's no other thing you can actually own. Yeah. You just hold it. You don't have to do anything. Put it into self-custody as the best option, obviously. So I, I, I think the ETFs are great for giving that access to companies and entities who, you know, who didn't have that access. But... I think if you're an individual and and you're around our age or, or you know up to a certain age where you feel that uh, you can learn how to self custody and and you got to sort of challenge yourself and think, okay, do I want control over my own property or or do I want you know that ETF provider to have control and maybe you know it, it could it, it might never happen but if there is a sort of a an order from the government to seize your property then that's going to be seized. You're going to get paid the cash, but that's it. You you don't have that. You never had the Bitcoin anyway, but you don't have that participation in that Bitcoin anymore. Mm. Um, 
Well, it's outsourcing your responsibility. Yeah, I mentioned, I, I, I say a lot of the same things like on this podcast. Uh, maybe people can send me if they get tired of it. But the, again, it comes back. Like for me, it's a team. It's outsourcing your responsibility. If you just flow through life and you just do what you think you have to do, like you have no responsibility. Like other, uh, other people are taking care of it, quote unquote, for you, but not to your benefit, right? putting money in the bank, playing the stock market, blah, 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 like all these, uh, taking out a mortgage, like all these things, it's, it's designed against you. But as long as you don't think about it, you're like, oh, this is nice. I own this and, home. And, I'm going to own this home, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And, and, and what you mentioned about the, the property tax, right? So when, when you have shares on the ETF, which is obviously better than the property tax still, but when you have the Bitcoin ETF, you're paying a fee to the asset managers. So why would you be paying a fee on to the asset managers exactly. if you just have it in cold storage and you don't yes. have to pay anything? Yes. So well, because you again, you know, then this little the decision is on another level, but you still have to decide: do I want to take my own responsibility or do I want to outsource it? Yeah. You know, and outsourcing it is what you pay the fee for. But that's like a recurring theme in I think studying and then adopting Bitcoin is okay. Do I do this investment into myself or do I buy it off, <laughs> basically, and let someone else um, do it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think self-custody can be sort of scary. Like, I, I was certainly scared in the beginning because uh, I think, I think it's, it's very common for everyone who gets involved. You buy it on an exchange and, and then stories you don't know anything about um, maybe self custody initially, and then stories about you know Celsius and and all that kind of thing that happened, and and then you see lots of tweets about you know not not your keys, not your coins, etc. And you start learning about those things, um, and then eventually all you really have to do is is go onto YouTube and see you know how can I store um, Bitcoin into self um, custody or a cold storage wallet basically. Yeah. And once you do that, you realize it. Oh, it's quite easy. You know, I, it, it's quite easy. So there is a challenge there, which is obviously you don't want to lose your coins because you don't want to send it to the wrong address or whatever dangers might be, or you don't want to ever store your um, your seed words electronically or, or somehow show them electron electronically accidentally or in a picture. Um, but, you know, once you learn that kind of thing, then it's quite easy. So, you know, that's the message I would really try and, and send to people if I can yeah. help in some way. Yeah. I mean, after 10 years in Bitcoin, I'm still sweating with a big transaction. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I know I, how I, it I, works, but I still, I'm still sweating. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm the same. Yeah. And, and, and with that, with, with the, um, you know, lots of uh, tweets um, going around before the halving about um, saving network fees because of the UTXOs, et cetera. So, uh, that, that sort of made me think a lot as well. And, 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 uh, my wallet wasn't that easy to identify how many transactions um, were in there. So, um, yeah, yeah it, a lot of Excel work happened there to, to get it done. Nice, nice. So, how does your how does your Bitcoin like real life circle look like? Are you are you or your friends in, are, are your <laughs> friends into it or your family? Like, what what does that look like? Um, right, good question. So, I've got two people who are very close to me um who if, from my family who are you know like us you know sort of maxis fully believe in bitcoin um but i'm certainly a lot more than them because i just i'm i'm, I'm, the, I'm just like you you know i live bitcoin I, I i love seeing all the videos learning more things seeing what the news are um and they just kind of trust me in the sense of keeping them informed and and I helped them, um, yeah, just with, with the, the general knowledge. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to influence them and, and, and basically help them um, take the fruits of their labor into the future and, and, and sort of appreciate it because it definitely gets... It, it's almost like with Bitcoin, I feel that, you know, one year of your, of your work that you can save will become 20 years of your work that you've saved in about you know six or seven years or something like that yeah or maybe 10 years um so so for every year of work that you save you get a multiple 
and obviously that depends on what happens throughout the years but it, it just feels like that so it, it feels like if i manage to influence somebody and help them it feels like i'm really really helping them in the future and that i'm doing something humane does that make sense yeah like uh, yeah i always say like it feels very altruistic i have like an altruistic motivation which you know other people interpret as yeah of course because you want to get people into your pyramid scheme you know but i i feel like well for me it just it 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 really improved my life and and what i said in the beginning like it opened my my it, it now it yeah it opened my mind i had to open my mind to understand but it freed my mind like I am lighter, <laughs> you know, like it really improved my, I, I would say, worldview, positive outlook on the future. Um, how do you say, like, uh, yeah, I, tr I uh, how do you say, like, like trusting I'm able to, like, build and provide for a family, like, like those things, right? Like, I think things you kind of, well, what we just said, kind of maybe like take for granted or yeah, I'm going to do that, but that's not so sure, <laughs> right? You have to facilitate that for yourself. And for me, yeah, Bitcoin is just uh, something that is helping me do that. And I feel it's a, it's a positive contribution to the world. And, and, and slowly but surely, I also see myself moving towards the direction of, you know, like I, I never... In the beginning, I didn't really understand like the quote of fix the money, fix the world, etc. But now I just, I, I, do, I do see that. And it's also what I say to a lot of people, like think of anything, like whatever you think should be fixed in the world, whatever is bad in the world, right? Anything you would want to fix in the world is broken because the money is broken, right? Because money is just, it's the base layer of interaction next to language right like it's how we exchange value and if that's corrupted then my incentive on one side of the value exchange is, is corrupted right as to what i deliver to you and on the other side um it it's also corrupted as to you know what you think are your wants or needs um in 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 your life basically you know i think that's the high type time preference that safe dean talks about and it's so um subconsciously basically right like it's not it, they are not conscious decisions you are kind of like forced to move in a, in a certain way and i think once you see that and kind of well basically step out of it right by adopting bitcoin um that that was one of the big things for me at one point at first i saw it as like buying bitcoin now i see it as selling fiat right I've, i'm i'm moving I'm, I'm i'm gathering value in one system and I'm slowly storing it. Well, not slowly because I moved all over, right? But that at one point I was slowly doing it. And when I was like, hey, but system A that I'm forcibly participating in doesn't make a lot of rational sense to me. And this other system B, system Bitcoin, makes total sense to me. So I have to move. Like I see it as moving. I don't see it as buying Bitcoin. I see it as what you said in the beginning. It's saving, right? So you are are gathering rewards you're gathering monetary energy for you know the work that you do and you're saving it in a system that is outside of the existing system so um bit of a tangent but that's kind of like where where um where I, like how i ended up there yeah yeah 100 percent. and and, and it, it, this is kind of initially tough to to sort of mentalize it and maybe understand but the price of bitcoin isn't that important um of course you want to buy it at the lowest you can because okay so you're going to appreciate a bit more because the cost basis is lower but, but the thing is um if you've got a system that's going to keep printing forever until it exists then you know that the price of bitcoin will keep increasing forever because being the hardest asset it will yeah. um, attract um, the surplus, let's say, and it will attract the money that will flow from other assets that are not that hard and as adoption and awareness increases. So as soon as you've got that opportunity to convert, then you know that, that's 
usually what I do. Obviously, if, if I bought it at 63 and, and it goes down to 57, I said, oh, shit, you know, I wish I had fiat now, but I don't. So that happens. But I, I guess that's the answer to the Ponzi scheme. It's that it's not a Ponzi scheme because money will always flow into it and people will keep seeing it as the most valuable thing. So whether it's at 200,000, 300,000 or 400,000, you know, people should not think, okay, will it go down or because it got to 400,000? It won't because it's simply more valuable than any sort of asset. So exactly. Where would you exactly. Money? Oh my God. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. It's an where exchange rate. It's not a price. It's an exchange rate. Yeah. Where would you put your money? So, I mean, I get emotional. Yeah, but it, is, it is money. That's the thing. It's not, that's why it's not investing. It's exchanging. Yeah. You're not, yeah. you're not, you're not transforming money into an asset. You're exchanging money for money. And, yeah. and the one unit of money of Bitcoin, the one, the one Bitcoin is worth 63,000 US dollar units. Exactly. So, yeah. And it will be worth more, obviously. In the f so when when I actually listen, I mean, I don't know if you get this. I mean, different people get different sort of um, um, heroes and 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 feelings from from different um, influences. But I, I personally feel sometimes emotional about Sailor's clarity in how he explains things. And I'm, I'm not sure if you if you watch the um, the recent uh, there is no second best presentation. Half, but I, I just I, I, that, I'm, that I'm halfway. Was, Gosh, that was genius. Uh, yeah. But I saw the first version in uh, Bitcoin Atlantis, I think. He did. he did the first iteration of it, yeah. God, I, I, what do you think of it? How do you feel about him? It's super clear. It's so yeah. clear. It, it's so funny. I, I sent it today to, um, oh, it's kind of a pet, pet peeve of mine, but like on Twitter, if I see super smart people who are into tech, you know, like startup tech, Silicon Valley, who are not into Bitcoin, I I seriously think, you know, this is my background, by the way, like this, this is where I'm from. Right. What are you doing? You are a geek. You are a geek. Should you, should, you, you should understand this. Like, and they are fading it incredibly, right? Yeah, but the crypto, I never saw the crypto blockchain thing uh, succeed, blah, blah. So, so I got into this conversation today uh, with, with one of these guys. I was like, I said this, right? Like, dude, you're into tech and not into Bitcoin. Like, wh what are you doing, right? And then, well, we had this conversation. So I sent him the presentation of Sailor. I said, and, and the one of Jack Mahler's from Bitcoin Atlantis, like his explanation, like seriously, best, best explanation I've seen in 10 years, I think. So I said, I said, just please watch these two videos, right? Like, this is literally the only thing you need, I think. Yeah. At, at least from my perspective, right? So I, I uh, see them as very intelligent. And so my um, assumption is that if they watch this, that they should be able to get it. Sure. And, they, and, they, and they come back and they still don't. You know, they still don't. And I, and I really think like how, and that, that, but this is also why I think, you know, understanding Bitcoin is way more a personal challenge than actually, you know, factually understanding what Bitcoin is, what its place is in the world, you know, like how Sailor, um, you know, shows all these different assets and how they compare and all these things. Sure. Um, it's way more personal and kind of like spiritual, philosophical in, 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 um, in, in my opinion. And, and, and think, absolutely. Think, and yeah, I, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and, and in some ways, I think, you know, the, the situation you are in at, at different parts of your life whenever it is that you decide or come across bitcoin that might um sort of create um the way you see it so if you 100%. are a rich guy you, you know and, and you're not really worried and, and if you, you don't really you know you're so rich that you don't even look at your money don't care you you might just not care that much but then there are super rich people who who do care, and they they they, they buy ten properties, <clears throat> and then so at some point in time they'll they'll realize that oh okay no I I can have this asset as you said that doesn't have all these operation expenses and and the property tax blah blah. So different personalities will see it in different ways. In Africa, people are not that concerned about store of value. Maybe they, they're more concerned about having transactions so that they because they don't have bank accounts or you know um, or, or, or you know. 
eighty percent or seventy percent unbanked people. So there's the um, the human context there as well in terms of unbanked, yeah. which we didn't talk about here, but that's super important as well, and that gives um, a huge value to the network because those people are users of that network, and you know, literally millions, or tens of millions, or hundreds of millions of people um, that that need that service, basically. Yeah. Well, and, and what you said about the clarity of Sailor, I for me, it's also very inspirational. More because, like you and I are using this to to store slash create wealth. He's using it to protect it, right? Like he has, yeah. we have some to win, but he exactly. has way more to lose. To right? lose. And, and that for me is a yeah. very big, um, I would say like kind of case. like tool to reflect like his motivation is way higher than our motivation, right? And then some people will say, well, yeah, but he has millions, he'll be fine, blah, blah. But that is no, no like not, it's not about the numbers. He has built something, acquired X amount, right? And you don't want it to become less. And once you understand that it will programmatically become less, you are on a search to to figure out how to protect it, right? And and uh, what I especially love about Sailor, by the way, like these old tweets of him, uh, you know, who that say like, "Oh, Bitcoin's days are numbered," blah blah blah, and like, look at him now, you know, like that. If that is not a signal for you, then like, I That's don't know. That's very true. You know. That's very yeah. true. The, the the fact that he changed his mind. Uh, publicly, and he jokes about it. That's that's yes. very, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's a big, you know. It, well, he it's probably even himself. better than it. It's yeah, the same exactly. Thing. Exactly, it's the it, same it, thing. It, yeah. It's what Peter Schiff doesn't do, which is hard to understand. Yeah, anyways, let's, let's, let's not talk about, about it. it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But well, but what, yeah. what you said is super important in terms of preserving capital, and because you're preserving shareholders' value, right? Because otherwise. Uh, you'd have to do what probably Apple just done, which is, uh, you know, you do the share buybacks, etc. Super interesting, by the way. Exactly. And, and and I think Sailor is in a position because he's majority, um, I'm not sure if he's still mm. right now, but he's, his position of power in MicroStrategy is unique in terms of the public companies, right? Um, but we should see other people uh, like Elon Musk has lots of Bitcoin in Tesla, and I think he doesn't talk about it simply because he's involved with China, who banned Bitcoin, and and China has a huge market for Tesla, etc. But but I do think that we should see like major companies coming through soon, you know. And how do you think about that? Because that's one of the things that sort of makes me think, right? You know, why wouldn't a company come in a bit quicker? <laughs> I don't know how long you've been following me, but I've had tweets about, um, I, I, I have the same with countries. I think the first follower of Bukele, the, like the, the, the first serious country who would adopt Bitcoin like Bukele adopts it could, will become a bigger winner than Bukele, right? Like, like, do you know the video of people who are like, uh, there's this video of people sitting like on a hill and there's one guy dancing. Right. And everyone feels yeah, yeah. weird. And then one person joins and then like all the other yeah. people join, right? Like that's what I mean. Like that first follower, that's the bravest person. Mm -hmm. The bravest person is the is the first follower, not the crazy guy who stands up. The one right? first. And and yeah, yeah. I so what I what I think is is fun to think about. We are two plebs who figured it out. You and I figured it out. And they did not figure it out yet. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> they have they have way more incentive to figure it out, right? Because well, there are some countries who export a finite supply of real, you know, nature's energy, aka oil, oil, and they get they get paid in a reward that's infinitely created. That's like the dumbest trade you could ever make. Like, you know, like they, they, their incentive is so clear. Like, and and so I, I think it's fascinating. It really interests me. Um, and well, same, same for companies. But I, I agree. You know, with with perhaps if you're like a central ruling party in a country, it, it it's probably a bit easier to make quote unquote easier to make the decision than. You know, if you're a public company, you have, uh, you know, seven people on a board and they're split yeah. and, uh, you know, like all, all that stuff. 
But I think the use case that Sailor lays out is just very clear. It's not complicated, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. So, so yeah, that, for me, Bitcoin is, I, 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 you know, I am a risk averse, very rational person <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm a geek, but I'm not an investor. I'm not a trader. I'm not any of these things. Like I just ended up with Bitcoin by rational thinking. And yeah, I find it fascinating that there's not more people who just think rationally in countries or companies like you have to protect what you created or what you can produce like that's so logical you know and going through all these like weird motions and systems and constructions and blah blah, blah to to facilitate that like it, it doesn't have to be that complex yeah i th i think i i probably i skip over some parts but just like for the general picture i think it can be pretty straight straightforward yeah 100 percent, and i i think Especially when you when you think about some governments, right? So not um, using any names or any countries in, in necessarily, but you know, if you're up there um, and you're so close to the money printer, you benefit from it because maybe your pay rises always um, are quite generous, and maybe you get bonuses that are quite generous, uh, generous, um, and then you can always purchase more each year, <laughs> which is the opposite of what we'd the call rest. normal, the rest. <laughs> yeah. So, so maybe there is a sort of a. Um, well, of course, they should milk their cash cow for as long as possible. Obviously, right? But I think, you know, like if you if you look at, um, I saw I saw a video of Bukela where he had a speech at some sort of like sports event, like a type of like Olympic Games event. I don't know. Like, and, and I was, I was watching it with like the English subtitles, and I was just like. This dude is building like a new country. It's so wild. It's like a paradise fairy tale island type message, right? Like I'm building this thing. It feels like you're watching something live that you only know from history or something like that. I don't know. Like it's it's like how you would want someone or or a, a party or whatever you want to call it, like a leader to to build a country and when I saw that, I was like, it's fucking El Salvador. Seriously. You yeah. know, like this guy is talking more sense than the people who lead my country, which is, I don't know, the sixth richest country <laughs> in the entire world. Crazy. I, I, I don't know. It, 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 it baffles me. And, and it's so, I don't know, like all the causes and all these things, but it's just illogical. It's just, it, 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 it's just not rational thinking for me. And so, yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, right now, Bukele to me seems like the um, definitely the, the best um, president or, or leader um, of a country alive, um, and and that's not only because of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one of the things, but uh, as you said, he's changing the con country in terms of uh, you know criminality has gone to to the lowest in the world from the highest in the world or, or something similar. Um, and and then you get all these human rights, um, maybe. Um, but he put people in of, prison, Alex. That's not okay. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, if they <laughs> if they're criminals, maybe maybe that's where they should be. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think he's done fantastically well. It's just the way he he communicates and and the way he he's strategic about his his videos and. And 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 the speeches that he's done, even in the U.S. about, um, for instance, uh, when he was talking about money printing and and if a yeah, country can great. simply yeah, yeah can simply print money, why would you be taxed? And 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 that being to have the illusion that they you know the tax is funding the country basically. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, they're very intelligent points. Um, and then we've got Lagarde for the, the European Central Bank saying that you know global warming. Um, is is the cause the balance sheet doesn't look great. So you know, the leader of a developing country seems to be so far ahead from the so-called developed countries, and it's really weird. And it makes you think what's going on, and mm. it, it also helps open your eyes. Yeah, the quote I love more from uh, Lagarde is the. We have to fight the monster of or the demon of inflation, and then she says like it came out of nowhere, and then I think like really, <laughs> yeah, like it, like it's 
the, the fact that so many people just accept that is also something that is just, I'd like, I don't know what to do about it, right? Like, I'm trying to do something about it by, like, moving away from that entire system, right? And then, like, on another side, I think, like, well, she ended up there. Like, how did she end up there, right? And, and, and that when you are in that position and you can stay, say these, like, yeah, I, I, I name them, like, fairy tale things. Like, it's just a sentence. And if enough people swallow it, if enough people don't ask questions, she can just say it. There's like nothing changes, right? So sometimes I, when, when I see these things, it's same for that, that woman who's the, the White House uh, spokesperson. I don't know her name. She has like this uh, d- double name. Yeah, I, I know who you mean. Sometimes she says stuff and I'm like, really? Wow. Okay. But then I think like, is this a test? Like, what's the weirdest thing I can say to see if, if, any, if anything happens? That's sometimes how, how it feels, like to, to kind of test the waters, like how, <clears> far, <throat> how far can I go? Like how, how many people are paying attention, <laughs> you know, something like, yeah. something like that. But I have the same with Lagarde. I think like you cannot say like inflation came out of nowhere. Like so you have two jobs. <laughs> There's two tasks of the thing you lead. I don't understand. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty shocking. I mean, I... I I'm, I... I read somewhere, and I won't remember who who it was, but they suggested that maybe um, these things that happen, you know, with with you know Biden tripping and and not knowing where he's going, and then you know saying uh, you know pause whilst he's is uh, reading the teleprompter, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. That they are actually planned, and and they're planned so that you talk about those things and that you don't talk about other things. Um, so oh, uh, yeah. If if that's true or not, I don't know. But then I um I saw um, an interview of Biden where he sounded a lot more um let's say aggressive um and lucid that mm. than he does when he's in public. Uh, you know, somebody was was sort of saying something to him that he didn't like, and he was quite aggressive. Um, so it just makes you think: could that really be acting or not but it, it's it's something to think about yeah i don't i don't try i i try to not like get into that stuff because i just have no clue like i can just yeah. c- control like my you know circle of influence in a sense and you know like yeah i just don't know i'm trying to look up a quote that i saw in someone's um uh bio which i really liked um Guy Gordon, let me see. Um, um, I have to scroll back a bit, but that was great. Uh, uh, yeah, I cannot find it, but it was kind of like. Uh, it, it was also about like the bread and circus type thing. It was from uh, from um, from a comedian. Oh yeah. Anyway, I can't find it, but yeah, it's that. It's just distraction. Um, mm. And I, you know, in general, I think it's just way more interesting to try and invest, you know, in yourself. And I think that's you know what we're trying to to do with Bitcoin. But maybe that's also this is one of the things I wanted to ask you. Like your your Twitter or handle is uh, Bitcoin to save us. Like save us from what? yeah it's 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 basically it's it's a sort of a joke or a um an illusion to saving really uh as you know twitter handlers uh, twitter handles can't be that long mm-hmm. and, and my initial sort of page name was bitcoin is uh long-term savings technology and i tried to sort of make it uh, make an illusion to that um but it was to save us in terms of saving the fruits of our labor, um, you know, saving our purchasing power going forward. Um, and, and, you know, as we talked here, it, it's simply so that our money doesn't melt away, especially uh, the lower classes and, and middle classes who can't put it anywhere else. Um, and, and in some jurisdictions, you even have that sort of... Um, the uh, sophisticated investor is the one that can participate in these investors investments isn't it accredited uh, investor right That's a, a, exactly so yeah. you know 
You have to I have mean, a million in cash in America. That's then you're an accredited investor. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's not very nice, you know. So um, you know, Bitcoin doesn't need that, um, and and that's you know again part of why um, it's for everyone. You yeah. can have one dollar and put it in there. Yeah. And in your bio, you say Bitcoin is digital property. Is that how you would explain uh, Bitcoin in five words or less? I saw a tweet of. Uh, from Swan yesterday, it was nice. Um, I'm gonna do a video on it, but they said like explain Bitcoin in five words or less, and you had all these different uh, suggestions. Um, and I and I think it's fun to think about that, right? Because it's uh, like you said in the beginning. I think like Bitcoin is it's different for everyone, right? Like how how your understanding not only came about, but like how you apply it into your into your life and i think that's the entire point of it being de de decentralized like no one tells you what it is that you know for you you can figure it out yourself so how you how you see it what your angle is how you apply you know its ethos or its technology for for your life so i thought it was like a really nice tweet but then i saw your your bio say bitcoin is digital property is that is that what you would have chosen as the answer to the question no, I, I think, do you know what, I think if I had to, to, to say in five words or less, I would say Bitcoin is long-term savings. That's, that's how I would see it. Um, and, and I think it just makes it easy for um, people who don't have a lot of capital to think about. Um, but then when you use sailor's analogy to the Manhattan uh, property or penthouse or whatever, you know, property, that's also a great analogy. Um, you can think that, yeah, you're, you're owning um, a property digitally that because of all the reasons that we've discussed here is going to be the best asset in terms of appreciation in the world, in terms of uh, not needing any sort of attention in the world, any sort of um, additional costs. Um, any sort of um, maintenance, you know, that, that's it's really just important. a thing. <laughs> it's, it's just, just a exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But in five it, words, I'd say it's it's long term savings. I mean, I yeah. think you and I kind of use it in the same way, and a lot of the people within our sort of, um, you know, realm probably would. Yeah. Now I'm ju now I'm just thinking about it's just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah now i had uh first i had uh i replied perfectly engineered finite digital scarcity <laughs> i think that's more the how or the, that's more the what i'd say but uh i don't know, like i try to like drill it back to like where where does all the rest come from but uh that got some likes, but I, I wasn't really happy with it. But uh, yesterday when I had the recording with Ella, she talked about, you know, we have a standard measurement for time. We have a standard measurement for distance, although in the UK and America, they decide to like ignore, but let's say, you know, centimeters, meters, et cetera, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but there's no standard um, measurement of value. And that is what Bitcoin can be. Um, and so then I ended up with, uh, a measurement for human productivity, uh, and so I'm, 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 I want to write an article about that because I think that's for for me that is uh, like the thing that I'm kind of drifting towards. But I, I think it would be a fun tweet also for you to check out. Uh, there were like hundreds, I think, of replies, so it's fun to see like all these different angles, you know. I'll, I'll definitely try and have a look and 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 the article that you're going to write about. Um, I I th I I see the um, the analogy of of time and space as well as very um, intelligent and very um, you know it sells very well the idea of preserving the fruits of your labor. So if you can um, project it across time, meaning that you beat everything else in yeah. terms of appreciation. Um, That's also what Sailor says in the in in that presentation, right? And also, I think uh, I don't know if you you read those article the articles of uh, their GG, but he has uh, the Bitcoin is time one. Um, but like how how Sailor explains it for me, it was like 
and and that's why I ended up with a measurement for human productivity. If I do something for you and I expend my finite energy in any amount of time, right? Let's say I do something for you for an hour, then in that measurement of my finite time, that one hour, I expend certain energy to do whatever I I deliver for you. And uh, and and we mentioned this before, but uh, you know, with the countries that get rewarded in an infinitely in in a, in a reward that can be infinitely created, that's a weird exchange, right? So I give something that's finite, you give me something that's infinite. That's that that that's not an equal exchange already, right? And so your side of the reward side of the value exchange should be something that is similar to me expending my finite time. And so how Sailor explains it, right? There's there's only one thing you can compare Bitcoin to, and that's time. For me, that's then the equation, right? If if X time equals Y Bitcoin, then that is the, the model for the value exchange between um, people, because then that exchange is equal at the moment of exchange, but it will also stay equal because the units that we use in the exchange um, are equal, right? And so if we use fiat money, uh, you know, if you give me fiat money as the reward, then at the moment we shake hands, our exchange is equal, but any moment after that, it's unequal because my reward gets devalued over time depending on how long I want to hold it before I spend it again. Sure. And so that's that's kind of like the angle where 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 I'm thinking. Because if we can make those value exchanges equal, then they will improve in quality, right? I will deliver a better quality product or service to you because the reward that I'm getting is um something that can save that value in time and space into the future. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm it, hashing it, it out. It does. Yeah. It does make sense. I think. I think it's going to be a very, a very good article from that angle. Um, I think that's the most important thing, isn't it? In in terms of store of value, um, and it's it's what's really missing in terms of the world of let's say investment or or um, of money is knowing that there is a um, a vehicle. Um, to, to help you get there until you want. Yeah. So I, I'd say that it's going to be um, an interesting article to read. I'll send it to you to uh, to to read before I publish it. But uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still thinking through it. But that's just also the fun of it, right? Because nobody really knows what what this can bring. We have like a certain point on the horizon. Um, based on our current understanding, right? And uh, I think that's also the fun of it is that we're figuring this out together, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I, and I think that's uh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. When it, um, uh, one of the things that's sort of um, a question I I have in terms of the future is 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 for instance, um, you know, all these uh, let's say whales that have a lot of Bitcoin. And uh, I guess if it's too concentrated, even though we know that they do not have any sort of more power in the network, um, what my doubt is, is whether the concentration would mean that there is no circulation, as in it will remain there um, and that will help um, the fiat value go up because it's coins that are not being sold. Um, but what the effect of that concentration would be in terms of um, the change of ham- hands would be, and then subsequent um, adoption, I wouldn't know um, what it would be. It's, it's just something that makes me think sometimes yeah uh, because we we have what seems to be and i'm not saying they are but it, it seems to be some sort of attacks um into bitcoin as in you know let's let's now um put these news out and then there are four or five six bad news out um and then you don't actually know who is selling and who is buying and usually you think who's selling is probably the retail people that get scared etc and and maybe liquidations on people who went long on the 
um, leverage. But um, who is buying then? You know, who and who might be buying could be people who knew that was going to happen. So that sort of thing makes me think. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's a fair question. I do think like that happens a anyway with anything. Yeah. And any asset, even if you have a skyscraper in Manhattan. Uh, I once read an article about how, uh, um, well, if you have a skyscraper in Manhattan, you need friends in City Hall, right? Because you need information about what's going to happen around your skyscraper, basically. And so I think that game of um, kind of, yeah, is that information arbitrage kind of like you, you need that information. I do think the manipulation, you know, the higher the Bitcoin price, the less manipulation, in my opinion. Like you need more mm. money to manipulate in general. Um, so that's my first thought. I think second thought, like I, um, I'm going to paraphrase, I think my friend Lau, but he says, you know, are people going to sit on their hands? Or if we, you know, if in 30 years, one Bitcoin is $1 billion, like Peter Dunworth says. And, you know, the math is scarily, uh, you know, I think in the right direction. Are you going to sit on your hands or are you going to do stuff? Are you going to build a, the future for your children or for how you see the world? Or, you know, like the, I, I think the value that is captured in Bitcoin by people that hold Bitcoin will also flow back into Bitcoin. And then the coins get distributed all over the place because people are going to work towards um, making the world a better place. You know, it sounds so stupid when I say that, like, <laughs> you know, it sounds so simple. But I feel like that's how we can get there, right? Like people will get to work on just interesting stuff, figuring it out, like make, ma literally making the world a, a better and more beautiful place. And so that's how, how the coins are going to get distributed because people yeah. are going to work for it. Yeah. One hundred percent, and 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 you know that's what you said. So so that idea of making the world a better place is you know many times um, fought against by those who talk about Ponzi, right? Because oh, you, you know, for you to win, somebody needs to lose, and you need um, the bigger fool, the greater fool, to to buy your mm. coin or uh, buy a higher price. But no, but the know, again, sorry that's... to interrupt. But the incentive is to contribute to it. That's exactly. the entire thing. The the, the zero sum fiat game is player versus player. I win, you lose. But Bitcoin is a mutually it, beneficial game, right? Exactly. It's not. A, yeah. So that's the entire difference. That's why it's exactly. such a paradigm. That's why people say it's a Ponzi because they cannot wrap their heads around the fact that there could actually be a mutually beneficial game. You know. Exactly, or because system. It, it, yeah. exactly because it, it's refutable by the fact that um, against fiat it will keep appreciating anyway. So yes, yeah. there may be sort of a time period where there is some volatility and it depreciates, but it will keep appreciating if you hold it long enough. So everybody is a winner because everybody needs to use it to purchase goods and services, right? So, so that's where sort of the, you know that's the that the banks that sort of Ponzi scheme um, idea, and and because well, the, I, you got, got the the halvings etc. Yeah, but that uh, I I hear I hear like I have like a little Jeff Booth here that's like talking to my yeah. ear like but but that that's you are still talking from the old system because you're talking about the valuation in dollar or pounds or mm. euros, and if in the world that we just mentioned one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin then. There is no yeah. fiat fiat influence in that mutually beneficial system, right? And uh, yeah, I, I I think that th that is where we are going, but we can actually already be there, right? I think that uh, I asked Jeff Booth like, how, what does the future of Bitcoin look like? And he's like, yeah, that's now. Like you can do it now, and and I and I think about that a lot actually. You know, I'm I'm figuring out how to do that, but. Um, I, I think yeah. that's where we will go. That the measurement of value is Bitcoin. So one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. There's not the, there's, there's yeah, there's nothing else. Yeah, 
what one of his i think what you're alluding to in terms of one of his main sentences that i think is really interesting is that um on on a free market um the the price of goods and services is is deflationary because as you um increase productivity and technology then the cost of everything goes down and and yet that that would be the the new way of seeing things in terms of the bitcoin standard um if it's only bitcoin right yeah so you know that that also explains how it could work on, it would work on a on a bitcoin standard yeah and I, and and I think it's funny because when I said like make the world a better place, I was kind of like oh that's stupid when I said it. But no, like I really mean it, and that ties into what you, what you were saying. If everything is deflationary, right? If 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 we, you know, eventually when technology progresses, everything, you know, uh, prices will fall to the marginal cost of production, and eventually it's free, right? If we start making the world a better place, let's make like bread free right and everyone have water and everyone have energy like i i think we need to you know that if if you are stuck and i think we both are still in some way in the zero sum fiat world sure. right we are definitely not fully over sure it's hard to zoom out very far right like outside of your own little circle of I need to get my rent or, you know, take care mm. of my mother or whatever, right? Like that's your little circle or maybe your the circle of your neighborhood or your municipality, whatever. But if you really zoom out, like if we fix hunger for everyone and water for everyone, you know, and housing for everyone and energy for everyone, do you know how many people have time to really figure shit out? <laughs> you know, like what are we that's doing in the universe and stuff like that but it's hard it's it's so hard to zoom out like that because you find yourself and your own situation so much more important which makes sense but it's you are you, you are being held there also so you don't even see a path to a zooming out and b actually doing what you're then thinking about and and yeah that i think that's so i want to rectify myself i think that's what i mean with, when i say like make the world a better place right like that it, it's that no that, that that's a very good point in terms of um time and and the availability of time to understand and having the time to research and, and sort of um challenge what you believe in and and what you've been told so <clears throat> You know, we we are stuck in a hamster wheel, let's say. You know, as many people say, and um, not having enough time um, for ourselves. You know, it's work. It's it's maybe working out so you look after your health, and it's um, commuting for many people. Um, and then you're stuck, and then you've got the weekends maybe to do sh uh, chores and and maybe seeing your friends and family, etc. So, you know, in order to understand Bitcoin, you know, as as many experts say you should be using you know a hundred hours or thousand hours so that you fully understand and sometimes it can be a real challenge to put you know the time in it and to have the desire to put a child you know and even have have the, the 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 openness of mind to understand that you should try and, and and see a solution because that's another thing as well you know how how will you realize that there is a solution 100 percent. Yeah. yeah no i i i, I think that's uh, an amazing point like I, I feel very privileged that i had the time to figure this out <laughs> you know like that I, I, in part i created that in part i don't know it was luck or it was given to, I, don't, I don't know but i i had the time and luckily i spent the time on the right thing but uh, yeah not not everyone can do that right and that's also i think why we should talk about this more and i and also well what we said in the beginning you know you said like i never did a podcast before and uh, you know you're you were a little nervous i think you're doing great but Thank the you. the it's just we are two dudes <laughs> we're trying yeah. to figure it out right like that 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 i i i, I want i really want to show that also with this podcast like it's not it doesn't matter where you're from or like what like it's all all these things uh, uh, by the way, like in Bitcoin, it, like religion, skin color, all these fucking things, nobody cares. Nobody cares, right? Like it's about this bigger thing that we're trying to figure out. It's like 
what uh, you know American Hoddle I think mentions like that's the pleb movement. You know, it's you're escaping literally what you just illustrated. Being stuck, exactly. you're you're escaping, you're escaping that. You're trying to figure that out, right? And to the people who are stuck and hear this, they think like, oh yeah, I hear them talk. But that's the point. Like, look in the mirror. That th- this th- th- this is the point. If you think that when you are listening to this, think again and look in the mirror. Like that's the point. Like we are we are no different than you. <laughs> you know, I think that's that's what it's about. <laughs> Exactly. I, I feel that if if in some way, obviously you've got a lot of viewers and, and you know, like I said, you know, congratulations for what you achieved and with your podcast and, and I and I watch myself, right? Um but if if there is anything that my participation as in for my own sort of um feeling of achievement um achieves here, accomplishes here is you know, normal people, um, you know, like myself I'd say see it um and they feel the same way and i'm sure a lot of people feel this way um that you know their money gets um very thin and and the savings they they they're they're fighting so hard to um to put together doesn't get um much that they they find the solution and and they look for the time to study it in more detail um they at, at least they open their mind to go and try and find Yes. Um, what Bitcoin is. Yeah, 100%. Uh, well, you know what I find funny when you say that, like, like to me about all oh, the podcasts or what you accomplished, like, I'm just figuring it out too. I have no idea. I don't feel like I accomplished anything like you. Like, I, I feel we are, we are in a way, um, I'm trying to say this in the right way. Like, I am... Uh, I'm no different than you or any people listening. Like that's the whole, the whole, that, that is the entire point. Like, or anyone who you would admire in the Bitcoin space or in the world or whatever, like everyone is just a dude, <laughs> you know, nobody knows what they're doing and everyone is winging it. Right. And, and yeah, like for me, and, and it's like just, uh, just doing it and talking about it and hopefully sharing this message. I hope that is already the inspiration for people to study it themselves, right? Because I think you cannot orange pill other people. You cannot, you should not say like, oh, buy Bitcoin. Although I know, you know, like if you want to buy Bitcoin, it's below in the screen, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, but you yeah. have to study it. You don't have to trust what exactly. other people say. You don't have to follow my instruction or your instruction it's an invitation to study it because the entire idea is that you can figure this out and verify this for yourself you don't have to trust other people and and that is that is what this gives you the fact that you don't have to trust other people and that everyone who participates in bitcoin as a money system they follow the rules because everyone else is following the rules because everyone else is following the rules like it's that is that is what it is right and yeah i i really want to emphasize that like it's we we are no different nobody is different in this thing like or anyone in any space like it you know it's uh it's the steve jobs quote who said he said like you know if you look around like uh, all these things that you see were built by people no smarter than you like it's that's true you know yeah, that means that that's that's obviously humble from from you and and um, I guess you know the the Bitcoin community has you know lots of um, intelligent people, smart people, and and one of the things I realize as well is that you know maybe maybe it has to do with with the humbleness of um, being able to go and study something that's totally challenging the status quo. Um, being open to realize that what you thought about money isn't true or that you was missing a piece in the puzzle. And, you know, if you've got that humbleness, maybe you're going to to um, use that humbleness um, in good ways, you know, for your own success. And in order to have success, you need to um, to put in the hard work. And, and I guess having that sort of personality trait is, is something that I realized within the community, you know, um, when you compare it to the, maybe to the tried fire world where people are a bit more, 
uh, maybe more strict and, and there is more of a game of, of personalities and, and politics. You know what it is? It's, they're stuck on credentials. Yeah. They, they, again, they outsource not their responsibility, but kind of like their, they outsource their reputation to a, 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 a degree that someone else gave them, right? Like it's the, it's the I have a PhD meme. It's that. Right, it's the, the. I don't know if you saw the zero hedge um, discussion with uh, Eric Voorhees and Scaramucci versus Schiff and uh, Nouriel Rubini. If you hear Rubini and Schiff talk, I my mind just I, I I melt. I don't know. Like I I I I I cannot imagine that these people are real. That there are people that really think like that, and they're like, oh, I'm this guy, dude. Shut up. Like if you, you can be in a certain position or have a certain image, but if you talk nonsense, it's nonsense, right? Like it's, it's not, I don't know. Yeah. Like the, it, yeah, it's that. I feel like that's the living, like I have a PhD type meme. Like you are outsourcing your credentials, but you're still talking nonsense. So, you know, but that's for the people who believe the credentials that you, you know, window dress your, your nonsense with. And so that's the same kind of like normie fiat world type thing. Like as long as you talk and people uh, swallow it, then you don't have to walk your talk, right? Yeah. That, that, that's a very good point. So it, answering about the, so yesterday's discussion, I, I saw it come up on Twitter um, live um, and then I clicked on it. And then I watched it for 20 seconds and I just thought it was so sort of chaotic that I just, I just stopped because it just, I think the design of it as well, the, it was, it was a table where people were so close to each other and just, mm -hmm. it, I don't think that works well for a debate. I think there's, there must be some sort of more space and I don't think, you know, nothing against the host at all. I mean, I watched it for 20 seconds, like I said, but you know, people were talking over them. Yeah, yeah, it was difficult. Kind of... <laughs> it was a difficult setup. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, the setup. Um, yeah. So, and they were calling it the debate of the century. I found it anything but, and I think uh, Natalie Brunel, um, sorry, Natalie Brunel's uh, debate with uh, Peter Schiff and, and uh, at CNBC, I think, with Charles Payne was fantastic. I think Natalie um, had such good points um, in favor of Bitcoin, and, and that was clear that it was a win. Uh, but in any case, um, we know that any gold bug is not being uh, fundamentally either um, intellectually honest or uh, putting the time into understanding Bitcoin and the differences. Because if they did, they would uh, put all their money into Bitcoin, really. Yeah. Well, and um, this, this goes back to something you said before about the halving. And, and I had this thought, but this ties in nicely. Like, you know, these charts where you see like the types of money and then you see like how Bitcoin is better than gold. Yes. But, but not on the, I don't know what the column is, but like the, um, the history, right? It's 5,000 years versus uh, 15 years, right? But uh, what, what you said in the beginning about, and, and this is, um, how I see the halving, I think the halving is a a point in time where we confirm all together everyone who is a user of this monetary network that the monetary policy is still enforced as as it was written in the rules right so it 's adopted by everyone in 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 this system, and that 's what you see live. I think that is what the celebration should be about but uh, or and what what I think is that that um, track record or history uh, you know column in in that uh, Bitcoin versus gold table. I think this should be taken into account. Like this is fast tracking the the history or the trustworthiness of of this money system. Is that every four years? Well, it's every ten minutes in in general, right? That the ledger gets verified sure. basically um but then every four years the the rules of the money system are adopted again by everyone it shows that it's enforced by everyone who participates in it right and i think this this could be a way for us to shape that argument against 
you know, that history part of gold. Because still with gold, like, do you know how much exactly new amounts of gold get out of the ground every year, right? Like how much gold is there on asteroids and comets and all these things? Like all that information is unclear, right? And so we should also deduct some points in some sense, I'd say, from from that gold, um, uh, that, that dimension uh, of gold, like about that predictability or, you know, the amount of, yeah, trustworthiness in a sense of the um, the the policies of that system. Although, yeah, how much of a system is gold anyway? But I think this is an entirely different uh, uh, conversation. Also, the comparison I'd say to digital gold is like a nice illustration, but it doesn't do justice to what Bitcoin is, right? Like again, if you look at the video of Sailor uh, from this week when he compares it to time. Right, it's engineered scarcity, which can only be compared to natural scarcity of time. Um, yeah, that's something totally different than what gold is. Right, gold is a scarce asset, but it's not engineered scarcity. Right, so there already it kind of like diverges. Right, like it's 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 not the same thing. But digital gold is a nice illustration for people to you know get kind of acquainted with uh, with the concept. I'd say. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think I think in terms of uh, I'll just address that last point um, really quickly in terms of digital gold because, um, as Sailor said, um, gold is not invested on by many people, and the reason it's not because it doesn't really provide good returns. I mean, it, it's its idea is to maintain a certain purchasing power, especially in times of deflation, um, but if you sell it as digital gold people might just think it's it's the same thing as gold but digitally so it doesn't really give it that uh, the best appreciating asset in the planet that's verifiable that as you said has the um the formulas in in input it into its monetary policy that you can verify there is a a pre um determined schedule that everybody knows within every single four years you know exactly how many btc will be uh, paid as a subsidy for every block, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a fantastic creation. Uh, and then, in terms of of gold being verifiable, I mean, you know, how much gold is in each central bank's vault, and and is all gold really 100% gold, or is it mixed with other metals? And how mm. are you going to know that? So <clears throat> you need three and, machines or something to figure out <laughs> if it's real. Yeah, gold, right? and, and and you know, you can produce more gold as demand increases. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's we all know that well, so it's, and, it's... and also if you talk about Bitcoin like r why does the value of Bitcoin keep going up it's because more people will store the reward for their productivity in Bitcoin can you do that with gold sure but that's kind of like how far it goes you cannot if I have like a bar of gold like right now now and I want to sell it I just can't I cannot sell it right now at this moment, 11 p.m. No. on on a Saturday. No, right? like I cannot do that. I can sell Bitcoin now to a guy in the Philippines in, in under 20 seconds. Sell you know? it, yeah, exactly. So, so me storing the value of my productivity in Bitcoin also gives me a way to to trade with it, to build up my life. That is why I expend and use my productivity, right? Because I eventually want to save it to build or do with it whatever I want, right? And that is just totally impossible with gold, let alone, you know, the, the, the how do you say, transportability and uh, costs and, and, and yeah, all those yeah. things, right? So, I mean, that's, that's secondary. Sure. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I I think I think also that like changing that illustration from digital gold to something else, I think is a big thing we like can all work on in the in the narrative, right? Yeah. But uh, well, it is 11 p.m. on a Saturday. I think we should wrap up a bit. I uh, I I want to ask you a last question that I ask everyone who's a guest, and that is, um, what is a core belief you will never let go? Oh, that's that's a very good question. A core belief I'll never let go. Ah, uh, God. Um, I guess it has it has to do with your principles. You know, there's an ethics, um, 
and you know everybody's ethics can be different um but i think you just got to think that if there is one main thing and never let go is that you should do good and that needs to be your um your motto in life you know and by that i don't mean you should be easy to take advantage of uh, you need to be able to stand up for yourself but the the standing principle is that you are good to people from a starting point love that man well thanks for sharing and also thanks so much you uh so so well for the people who are still listening i uh I had a recording scheduled, but my guest couldn't make it, so I shared on Twitter who who wants who wants to jam for an hour while we're ninety minutes uh, further. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Alex Alex replied, but uh, dude, like I have to say, like this is seriously like one of the reasons why I started this podcast. Like this, like I love that that you are in a different place and you come from a different place and you you do something different, you know, in your professional life. And we connect because we end up, you know, in the same place, which is, yeah, incredible, I think. Like, I love that Bitcoin enables that and that we can share these thoughts. So thanks so much for sharing your story. Thanks so much for your time. Um, I will link to your uh, Twitter X profile so people can follow you. And uh, yeah, man, let's stay in touch. Thank you so much, Prem. I mean, it's, it's been a real pleasure. It's, it's obviously, as you said, been entirely accidental. Um, I was very scared, um, you know, before this, but I, I just thought I'll be brave. Um, recently, I've been putting a li- little bit more time into Twitter um, just because I enjoy it. And, you know, it, it's maybe an accidental step that it's going to, um, you know, give me more courage to maybe do something um, similar or akin to what you're doing. Maybe not with interviews, but maybe some videos myself and, I think it was it was the first step and you know again congratulations for what you're doing because it's really entertaining. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B R A M K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.